Greetings to Dr. Asman bin Samsudin. I'm Timur bin Durai and my matrix number is S607912. And our group have chosen the topic of discuss the development of four views of equality, equity in the history of Malaysian economic management since the independence. Describe the time series of each Prime Minister of Malaysia. And I will be discussing the introduction part of our study. Equity is the fair and impartial treatment of all people, um, regardless of their circumstances or background. The idea is that everyone should have the same opportunities and resources, and that disadvantages or discrimination against uh, particular groups should be actively addressed and fixed. Equity in education means uh, providing all students, regardless of race, socioeconomic status, or other factors, with the resources and assistance they require to succeed. Access to advanced coursework, extracurricular activities, and excellent teachers are all examples of this. Discrimination, bias, and lack of resources are all examples of the systemic obstacles that prevent some students from reaching their full potential. Equity, on the other hand, refers to the ensuring that all employees, regardless of race, gender, sexual orientation, or any other factor, are treated fairly and have equal opportunities for advancement in the workplace. Equal pay for equal work, fair hiring and promotion procedures, and a culture of inclusion and diversity in the workplace are all examples of this. In addition to that, equity also refers to ensuring that Everyone in the criminal justice system is treated equally and impartially regardless of race, socio-economic status or any other factors. Fair and impartial policing, unbiased court procedures and equal access to legal representation are examples of this. Equity in healthcare refers to ensuring that all individuals regardless of race, socio-economic status or other factors have access to affordable, high-quality healthcare. Access to affordable prescription drugs, culturally competent care, and affordable preventative care are all examples of this. It is essential to address and eliminate any systemic barriers that prevent certain individuals or groups from achieving their full potential in order to achieve equity in this and other areas as well. Discrimination, a bias, and a lack of resources and a lack of representation are all examples of this. Diversity, inclusivity, and fairness in all fa facets of society must also be actively promoted. In the context of economics equity, which is refers to the equitable distribution of wealth, income, and opportunities within a society between individuals and groups. This is because it is based on the idea that everyone in a society, regardless of their income, wealth, or social status, should have access to the opportunities and resources they need to live a decent life. In economics, progressive taxation is one of the most important ways to achieve equity. This is because that, ma that many people with higher incomes pay more in taxes than people with lower incomes. This helps to redistribute wealth, bringing more resources and opportunities to those in a lower income and brackets instead of the highest earners. Additionally, government programs like welfare and social security can serve as a safety net for those in need and facilitating access to healthcare, housing and food for all. Providing opportunities for education and training to all individuals, regardless of their background or income level, is another important aspect of economic equity. This could be anything from free or cheap education for everyone to vocational training programs that help people learn the skills they need to get to good paying jobs. Additionally, economic equity also depends on the fair labor market. This includes ensuring that workers are protected from discrimination and exploitation, receiving a living wage and have access to benefits like healthcare. And policies like anti-discrimination laws, collective bargaining rights, and minimum wage laws can accomplish this. Equity in economics is also dependent on efforts to reduce poverty and income inequality. Policies like expanding access to credit and financial services for those who are economically disadvantaged 
increasing the availability of affordable housing and providing specialized assistance to individuals and families with low incomes are examples of this. Corporate social responsibility programs, impact investing, and socially responsible business practices are examples of private sector initiatives that can contribute to economic equity. These initiatives are in addition to policies implemented by the government. Moreover, equity means more than just distributing wealth and resources. It also means creating an environment where everyone has equal chances to succeed and raise their standard of living. This includes addressing the systemic obstacles that prevent certain groups, like those with low incomes and minorities, from realizing their full economic potential. In economics, equity is the idea that everyone should have access to the opportunities and resources they need to live a decent life regardless of their income, wealth, or social status. To ensure a fair distribution of wealth, income, and opportunities for all individuals, economic equity requires a combination of government policies, private sector, initiatives, and systemic barriers. Since Malaysia's independence in 1957, more than six decades have passed. The country's nine prime ministers are elected by the people to lead the government are Tunku Abdul Rahman, Tun Abdul Razak, Tun Hussein On, Tun Abdullah bin Haji Abdul Barawi, Dato Sri Muhammad Najib, Tun Dr. Mahade, Tan Sri Dato Haji Mayaddin, Dato Sri Ismail Sabri, and Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim. The prime ministers had an impactful influence on the management of the country's economy during the duty period. This study also looks at how prime ministers managed the economy during their time from four different economic points of view, which are egalitarian, Rawlsian, utilitarian, and market-oriented. Egalitarian is a person who believes in human equality, especially with respect to social, political, and economic effects. Rawlsian is a person who advocates a system to ensure the fair distribution of primary social goods. Utilitarian is a person who focuses on ethical theory that determines right from wrong by discussing on outcomes and the market and the market oriented person who believes uh, the best possible economic consequences will result if individuals are free to make their own economic decisions uninhibited by the government constraint. Next, Malaysia's economic management after the independence. Malaysia's economy was largely dependent on a small number of agricultural and mineral exports when it gained independence from Britain in the year 1957. The agricultural sector had a significant impact on Malaysia's economy when it first gained independence. There were 67 opportunities for employment in agriculture, which accounts for 33% of the country's GDP. Additionally, agricultural exports have a significant impact, accounting for 6%. The government has also implemented policies to promote industrialization and foreign investment, which have led to a diversification of the economy and an increase in the exports. In relation to that, post-independence, one of the compiling economic management in Malaysia has been the implementation of new economic policy in the year 1971. The new economic policy aimed to reduce poverty and income inequality and to promote ethnic harmony by increasing the economic participation of the country's ethnic, Malays and other indigenous groups. This policy was successful in reducing poverty and increasing economic growth, but it was criticized for recreating a culture for independency and for shifting the development of a truly merit-based society. Another important aspect of Malaysia's economic management has been the promotion of free trade and foreign investment. This has led to a significant increase in foreign investment and the growth of key industries such as manufacturing, constructions and also services. In the year 1970s, the Malaysian economy based on mining and agriculture was transitioning toward a more diversified economy. Since the 1980s, the industrial sector has led to a Malaysian's growth. The high level of Malaysia 
investment plays an important role in this. Malaysia consistently achieved more than 7% of GDP growth along with low inflation in the year 1980s and 1990s. Lastly, the, pro the poverty rate in Malaysia has also fallen dramatically over the years. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Norella Bintur Sri. My metric number S58295. I want to present about egalitarian views. Egalitarianism is the belief that everyone should be treated equally in all aspects of life, including politics, the economy, social life, and culture. Egalitarianism is derived from the French term equal, which means uh, same. Egalitarianism is the idea that everyone should be treated equally particularly in social, political, and economic matters. Equal opportunity also means having the chance to take part in the aforementioned activity. Therefore, there is no distinction between them, whether equality of opportunity is a branch of egalitarianism. In accordance with this understanding of the egalitarianism thesis, everyone has the same underlying moral values. An important component of this concept is a presumption against the violation of static development. In modern English, this concept can be defined as either a political doctrine that asserts that all people should be treated equally and have fair political, economic, and social system, or as a social philosophy that encourages the elimination of racial and economic increase between individuals, individuals or the excess existence of some sort of power redistribution. As a result, some individuals think that this is the typical state of society. An economic based on the idea of equality is one that which gets research being equality ration according to need in a way democratically decided by the local egalitarian assembly, which also decide what is reasonable from each according to reasonable ability to each according to need or reasonable design. The sharing economic portion of this document goes into greater information about this type of economy, egalitarianism. The anti-egalitarian claim that people won't work hard unless they are motivated to get richer than others by doing so is referred by the fact that the egalitarian economy which replaced the capitalist economy and wrongly half of Spain during the Spanish Revolution of 1936 until 1939, produced more wealth than the early capitalist economy. People work hard when pursuing goals that are mutually beneficial and on an equal basis. anti egalitarian firstly claim that if everyone who contributes equi equitably in line with capacity has the same right to receive for free what they receive need to decide, then no one will exceed the challenge, challenging, dangerous or unpleasant activity that must be complete. In a culture with a caste system, people are in some position of privilege depending on their natal lineage. If one is a legitime, legitimate kid of aristocratic parents, they will be eligible for a restorative benefit. A key aspect, aspect of equality is historically connected to the development of competitive market economics in the idea of equality of opportunity. This objective may be known of formal equality of opportunity or job that are often to talents. According to the research, the egalitarian concept of fairness in the management of the nation economic holds that regardless of gender, ethnic, ethnic, religion, or age, everyone is trained equally in an egalitarian society. Instead of a class system, an egalitarian society often has equal access to wealth and income. Certain characteristics of equality are mirrored in laws, politics, and economics, and, and some societies respect equality more than others. Thank you. Hello and Assalamualaikum, my name is Lilis Friani with me number s 58368 and I will explain about the Russian views. Russian views maximize the usefulness of the least well-off person of society. According to Rose, the most equitable allocation increases the benefit of society least well-off members. To facilitate equity, Rose emphasizes the formal notion of justice over the substantive notion of fairness that calls theory of justice. According to Rawls, there are two types of principle of justice. The first one is principle of equal liberty. 
This principle is the first principle of justice, and according to Rawls, it stated that all citizens have an equal right to essential liberty, which include freedom of conscience, expression, association, and democratic rights. The second principle, called principle of equality, this principle stated that economic principles should be more organized in such way that they satisfy two requirements. The first requirement is the least average member of society should be given more benefit. And second one is economic inequality should be structured so that no individual, regardless of ethnicity, gender, or social background, is barred from holding any post or office. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Taufiq Hidayat bin Muhammad Isham. My number entry is S58655. Today I would like to talk about the utilitarian views. Firstly, is uh, Jeremy Bentham is often considered the founder of traditional utilitarianism in years 1748 until 1832. Utilitarianism is a view that states that action and policies need to be evaluated based on the benefits and costs imposed on society. After that, this principle has three requirements, one of which is that we must decide what alternative act or policy we can implement in that circumstance. Next, for each possible cause of action, we must calculate the direct and indirect benefit and cost that will result for all those who will be impacted by the cause of action in the future. And the lastly, the morally right cause of conduct must be determined by which alternative offer the most utility. While the objective criterion in utilitarian acting is benefit largest for as many people as possible. In other words, an ethnic good policy or action is a policy or action that brings the greatest benefit to as many people as possible. There are many benefits of utilitarian views. Firstly, it's very influential in the field of economy and also became the basis of economic cost benefit analysis technique. Secondly, is an efficient action is an action capable of providing the desired output which the lower research input. Thirdly, the intuitive criteria used by people in discussing moral behavior or action. And the lastly, views that tend to be proposed when discussing government policies and public commodity items. That's all from me. Thank you. Hi, my name is Pravina Rajendrakrishnan. Next, I'll continue with the fourth view of equity, equality in economic management, which is market-oriented. A market-oriented reform is a policy initiative that allows and encourages private agents to compete in a sector, activity, or market. Thus, private participation and competition among private players are the core notions behind market-oriented reforms. A market-oriented reform in most situations indicates a reduction in the debt and scope of government participation and interference in an economic activity. Moreover, market orientation is a company strategy that stresses discovering consumer wants and desires and developing products and services to meet them. Companies with a market orientation view the opinions and wants of their target market as an important component of their new product research and development R&D. Although it may appear clear, proponents of market orientation claim that the traditional approach to product creation is the reverse. Furthermore, market-oriented policy reforms were complemented by a significant emphasis on restoring and sustaining macroeconomic stability, preserving a realistic real exchange rate, and satisfying the infrastructure demand of a fast-developing economy. The government's approach to boosting Malay participation in the economy shifted as well. With the government focusing more on entrepreneurship, managerial knowledge and skill development within the Malay community, the government's adherence to the 30% equity participation aim grew less tenacious. This modification represented a shift in the government's approach to assisting the Malay minority. The assistance now took the form of supporting the Malay community in competing 
more boldly with the other communities without being over reliant on the government. The Malaysian government also eased restriction on foreign equity participation and elements of the industrial coordination act were liberalized. Up to 100% foreign equity on a ship of export-oriented enterprises was permitted and work visa rules for foreign employees of companies with 2 million US dollar or more in foreign paid-up capital were relaxed. A customer-centered approach to product design is referred to as market orientation. It entails conducting market research to determine what consumers perceive to be their immediate needs, key worries or personal preferences within a specific product category. Companies may also use further data analysis to uncover trends and consumer needs that haven't been explicitly articulated. Understanding these tendencies can help out product makers fulfill or even predict consumers' need. Next, advantages of market orientation is frequently includes enhancements in customer service and product support aimed at addressing consumer issues. This helps to maintain overall consumer happiness and fosters brand loyalty and favorable word of mouth advertising. To be successful, businesses must be guarantee that the market orientation approach is adopted and promoted by all departments so that it becomes an intrinsic part of the corporate culture. Market orientation, when used effectively, can assist a company in increasing customer retention and propelling expansion in new demographics. Market orientation can sometimes disclose client needs that are simply too expensive or difficult to achieve. The company must then figure out how to best address the needs of its customers in practical concepts at the very least may inform long-term development strategies. Options that are not currently cost-effective may become viable in the future due to advancement in technology, research, law or other market factors. Other than that, market-oriented development prioritizes consumers' desires, building the product around their expressed needs and wishes. This is in contrast to product orientation, a business strategy that stresses raising consumer awareness of and liking the features and benefits of a certain product. Product differentiation is frequently associated with a product-oriented strategy. Next. I want to talk about Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad. He's such a very ambitious and intelligent person. He has a utilitarianism value because he made something different for Malaysia, such as new technology to Malaysia to develop system at Malaysia. And he also created first car for this country that we call Proton. He also cooperate with other foreign firm to export our raw material to overseas and the last one he gave an idea to make the electronic things to go more advanced in our country in addition we also want to touch about Tun Abdul Razak who's the second prime minister in our country he's a very kind person and know where he came from that's why he has a egalitarian value by generalizing the right of all people and developing every rural area. He is the man who caring more about educational level. That's why he had built more university in the rural area to generalize all people. For example, UITM, UKM, USM and more other university. And the last word, he has not racist person. Because he has a kind to more type of racial person. Thank you. My name is Muhammad Zahilmi BHB. My metric number is S58793. Today I will present about equity in history that was obtained in the government of our Prime Minister. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Tunku Abdul Rahman was the first Prime Minister of Malaysia. Serving from 1957 to 1970, he played a significant role in the country independent from British colonial rule in shaping its polity and social landscape. His effort to promote egalitarian and social justice, particularly through policy aimed at reducing economic and social disparities among different ethnic groups in Malaysia. 
He also worked to promote national unity and reconciliation uh, between different ethnic communities in the country. Uh, he also known as a father of independence. Tunku Abdul Rahman also play a significant role in the country's economic development and the creation of the market-oriented economy. Uh, he promote policies aimed to attract foreign uh, investment and the encourage the growth of private enterprise. He also implement policies to promote industrialization and modernization, such as the, the establishment of the National Economic Council and the initiation of the first Malaysian plan, uh, which is focused on the development of infrastructure, agriculture and industry. Uh, Tunku Abdul Rahman also aim a small business development such as uh, such as the establishment of the Small Industry Development Corporation SIDC. He also worked to improve uh, the overall business. Uh, it is important to note that his policies and also had the objective of reducing economic and social disparities among the different ethnic groups with the concept of social market economy. My second Prime Minister is Tan Sri Datuk Haji Mujahideen is a prominent political figure in Malaysia. For his contribution to the country's economic development, one of his main contributions in the market-oriented development of Malaysia is he emphasized on the promotion of free trade and foreign investment. As Minister of the International Trade and Industry, he worked to liberalize uh, trade policies and reduce barriers to foreign investment, which helped to attract more uh, foreign companies and boost economic growth. One of his uh, examples of his effort in market orient uh, policy was the establishment of the Malaysian China Quantum Industrial Park. Uh, MCKIP, uh, the part which was developed in the partnership with the China, China was designed to attract foreign investment and promote the growth of export-oriented industries. The part has uh, attracted numerous Chinese companies, creating jobs and boosting economic growth in the region. Second, for the egalitarian in Malaysia is he emphasized on the importance of social welfare program and the elimination of poverty. He introduced a number of initiatives to improve the life of country, uh, including the One Azam program and Bantuan Saridu. Uh, the third is uh, why for the utilitarian in Malaysia is policies and initiative that benefit the greatest number of people. He introduced a number of policies aimed to improving the life of Malaysia and enhancing the overall well-being of society. One of his efforts in, utilita in utilitarian is his policy and aim at improving the quality of education and training. He initiated policies to improve the quality of education and skill training to ensure that the workforce is well equipped to meet demand and global economy. And last is uh, Rosen. Uh, the example of Rosen is his emphasis on the importance of affordable health care. He introduced a policy aimed at making health care more accessible and affordable for all Malaysians. Regardless uh, of their income level, this includes entities such as One Care Program, which provide low case health care service and low income. My name is Nufatia Binti Muhammad, and my metric number is S59414. Today I will present about equity in history that was abandoned in the government of our Prime Minister, uh, Tung Hussein On and Abdullah bin Haji Abdul Badawi. The third Malaysian Prime Minister who served from 
1971 to 1981. Tu Ho Se-on was known as a very sensitive person in the struggle to arcade racial unity and has a reputation for cracking down on anyone who tries to stir up racial unrest in the country. Due to his effort in fostering unity among the Malaysia community, Tu Ho Se-on is remembered as the father of unity. Tu Ho Se-on implemented policy at reducing poverty and income inequality. As we as improving access to education and healthy care for all Malaysians. This policy could be considered consistent with the principle of egalitarian, which equal distribution of resources and uh, opportunity for all members of social. One of his notable policy is the Look East policy, which M at Lean from the success of the Asian Tiger and adapting the best practice to Malaysia. This policy helped Malaysia to improve in economy and reduce poverty. Tu Hussein was known for his primitive approach to governance, which can be seen as consistent with the principle of utilitarian which hold that the moral value of an action should be based on its ability to promote the greater amount of our happiness all will be for the greatest number of people. During his tenure as Prime Minister of Malaysia, Tu Hussein implemented policy aimed at promotion, economy development, economy development and reducing poverty. Tu Hussein was known for his commitment to economy development during his tenure as Prime Minister of Malaysia. He implemented policy aimed at promotion market-oriented economic growth and reducing poverty. This policy include the promotion of foreign investment, the encouragement of private enterprise, and the liberation of trade. Next is Tung Abdullah bin Haji Ahmad Badawi. Tung Abdullah bin Haji Ahmad Badawi was the 50th Prime Minister of Malaysia. He is known as the father of human capital development. Tung Abdullah has introduced the National Integrity Plan which is to plan a neutral uh, culture of interest and integrity among the Malaysia community. During as Prime Minister, Tung Abdullah focused mainly on the economy and policy development of the country. He also emphasized on promoting national unity, strengthening democracy and good governance, and reducing poverty and inequality. It is not clear how his policy and action align with relation theory of justice. Tun Abdullah bin Haji Abdul Badawi, who serves as the Prime Minister of Malaysia, is credited with implementing market-oriented economic policy. The policy includes liberalizing trade, reducing government intervention in the economy, and promoting private sector growth. He also implemented a number of structural reforms aimed at increasing the efficient and competitiveness of the country. So that's all about Tu Hussein and Abdullah bin Haji Abdul Badawi from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Safan bin Muhammad Shafiq. Metric number S58361. I will talk about Dr. Sering Najib from 2009 until 2018 and Tun Dr. Mahathir from 2018 until 2020. First of all, I will talk about theory lesson for Dr. Sri Najib. The fair and equal allocation of resources and opportunity is a key component of the Rosen theory of justice, which was formulated by philosopher John Rawls. According to Rawls, a just society is one in which opportunities are distributed to those in society who are least fortunate. The new economic model is one of Dr. Sri Najib program that adhered to Rawls theory of justice by fostering competition and investment in important sectors 
the NEM sought to decrease income inequality and boost economic growth. Additional, the two Srinagar administration implemented policy and program like One Malaysia People Aid Bring, which offer financial support to low income households and the National Transformation Program, which sought to raise Malaysian quality of living and lessen poverty. This law attempts to make sure that the allocation of opportunity and resources benefit those in society who were less fortunate. In summary, the third Srinagar policy and initiative during his time as Malaysian Prime Minister can be viewed as conforming to the tenet of the Russian theory of justice. Next is theory market orientation. The Economic Transformation Program ETP, which had the objective of making Malaysia a high-income country by 2020, is one illustration of the Serenaji initiative to support market orientation by implementing market orientation policy, including deregulation, liberalization, and private privatization. The ETP aimed to go foreign investment, generate new jobs, and boost economic growth. The Government Transformation Program GDP, another illustration focused on enhancing public service and addressing important concerns including crime, corruption and poverty. The GDP also announced to introduce of a market orientation strategy in the public sector with the goal of enhancing the effectiveness and efficiency of public service through private sector engagement and competition. In conclusion, that the Srinagar policy and initiative through this time as Malaysia Prime Minister were primarily concerned with fostering economic growth and competitive through market oriented policy and strategy. And strategy. Last for Datuk Sri Najib is theory agriculture. Datuk Sri Najib Razak also provides the One Nation People Aid Bring initiative, which offers financial aid to low income households, is one illustration of his attempt to promote equality. In addition, Datuk Sri Najib introduced the National Transformation Program, which had the dual objective of raising Malaysia's standard of living and reducing poverty. The program includes initiatives like the National Key Result Area, which established goals for lowering poverty and enhancing Malaysian quality of life. Hi, my name is Sandhya. Next, I'm going to continue with the conclusion part. A new economic policy that aims at national unity through the process of eradicating poverty and restructuring society in the context of strong national security. All national development programs and current government policies introduced are planned and implemented to achieve the above objectives. This effort requires not only a persistent effort from the government and its staff, but also requires a change in attitude, energy and thinking of the people from the private sector. Independence can be divided into two main stages, which are before the arrival of British and during the British occupation. The economic system and development of the Malay community before the arrival of the British revolved around the agricultural sector, fishing, forest harvesters, and some even involved themselves in producing the products of the earth. Carrying out the business of exchanging goods of necessities with other parties, the Malays have become the main supplier of these products to Arab, Indian, and Chinese merchants and then to European merchants such as the Dutch and Portuguese. This shows that the economy of the Malay community at that time was not closed but had also reached the level of international trade. Economic activities in general have enhanced interaction among Malaysians' diverse ethnicities and contributed to social harmony. However, if the state's output of money and wealth is not dispersed equally among ethnic groups in classes, this condition might produce social unhappiness. This position will create friction and conflict in the society, stifling the country's economy and progress. In Malaysia, the aspects of economic growth and equity have always been emphasized in development plans to ensure an equitable distribution of national wealth in the economy. The development strategies focused on the diversification of industrial structure, enhancing human resource development, promote the use of modern technology to sustain growth momentum and balanced socio-economic development. The roles of the government in the economy were gradually reduced through privatization and the private sector has to play a bigger role in creating economic activities through expanding private investment. The achievement was most evident during the period of the new economic policy 
as clearly indicated by the significant reduction in the absolute poverty level and more participation of the native in the modern business sector, which have provided political stability and opportunities for further social and economic development. Greater economic equity enables more people to engage at a higher level and add value in ways that help the economy perform better overall. The post-independent social and economic development of Malaysia has been guided by a series of five-year development plans and all these plans were successfully implemented and transformed the economy from an agricultural-based to a modern technological manufacturing-based economy. Malaysia would face new challenges as it moves from a production-based economy to a knowledge-based economy. The government and the private sector must take the necessary steps to promote knowledge creation and skills for the economy to stay competitive in the borderless world. One of the determinants of success in the knowledge-based economy is the continuous generation and acquisition of knowledge by the workers to cater for the rapid changes of society demands in the borderless environment. This would mean that Malaysia needs to provide access to education to the population through distance learning besides the traditional on-campus learning, such that education should not only confine the school leavers but also workers already in employment, which the objective of providing lifelong learning for them.